So I've got to be careful, I'm on the stock tyres. I like to have a set of off-road tyres on this. It's so fun. And it's so easy to ride. So easy to ride. And so we're doing the bike walk around. The 18 inch rear, tubeless tyres. I love that little muffler. Absolutely love it. The adjustable seat is awesome. Been six foot one. I really appreciated being able to raise the height of that seat. 21 inch front. Headlights, great. It shines a, a lot. I, I saw it in the shadows even. The bike all around is a really good looking bike. It's a 21 inch front. That brake is enough for the bike. What's on there? Yeah, centre stand, rear rack, subframe at the back there, and easy to use controls. Really impressed with this bike. Really impressed. Alright, so this is the start point that I had for the day. You're going to have to forgive me. My mic had become disconnected while I was doing the um, walk around. I must have bumped it with my hand. But along here, I'm testing the ABS. On, I just wanted to test it. You know, as, as I ride along, you'll watch me in a second. I was doing about sixty or seventy kilometers an hour, and just hit the brakes, and it stopped. There we go. It stopped pretty easily. What I did find. I turned it off when I go on road. I normally turn my ABS off when I'm when I'm on off road, but I'm not sure if it was just the tires or the bike itself. But I turned it off and I hit the brakes and the back just slid everywhere. Admittedly, it was a bit wet, but when I put the ABS on on the dirt, it really worked extremely well. So I left the ABS on for the whole the whole day. It, the ABS is, works on and off road, and normally, like I said, I would I would always always turn off the ABS. And I'm testing again. Look at that. Even on loose gravel, and it just stopped beautifully. I was really happy and impressed with the ABS. All right. So the controls I worked out in about two minutes. They're really easy to use. If you want your trip to come up here, you just literally toggle across. If you want to turn your ABS on or off, there's two ride modes, or there's four ride modes. There's performance ABS on, performance ABS off, that's just the rear. Eco ABS on, eco rear ABS off. I like to have the ABS on today for me. I've got the standard tyres and I've done the test before and I discussed that before. It's so simplistic and it's... You have here your, um, sorry, your power for a phone. If you put your phone on there, it uses your GPS. You plug it straight into a little USB-C, I think they're called. Let's have a look. I don't know what that size is. Yeah, Type-C. So, I'm standing up, and this feels really comfortable. Six foot one, standard, bulk standard, foot peg standard, didn't move the handlebars, and it just feels so comfortable, like the engineers have absolutely nailed it with this bike. 
Oh, I feel like making room in the garage for another one. Well, not another another Himalayan. I haven't really got one yet. But I'll tell you what. I really understand. Oh, the mirrors come loose. I probably should stop to tighten that. I really get it. Himalayan riders. I get it. I get your... I didn't ride the last version and I don't want to compare this bike to anything but I've got so much room I just feel so comfortable I like the small screen I, I like that it's down there I like it it, make, it makes you feel like you've got so much room to move and I can get back here I can come up on the tank I can stand up everything's, everything's comfortable It's got loads of power. Yeah, I don't know what the specs are. I'm not a spec guy. I'm gonna ride and try and see if I like it. And there are not many bikes that I jump on where I feel at home straight away. And it's an easy bike to ride. It's great on the road. It's great off-road, and I'm on these, you know, road tyres that come standard. I don't know if they're completely road, there's a little bit of tread in them. But, look at that. It's so, just the throttle response for a 450 single. It's kind of like we're moving into a new era of adventure riding. These bikes are just opening up people, uh, people's worlds. I would comfortably ride this bike all over Australia. I'm not the seating position is... Oh. Can't beat it. But for under $10,000. I think I'll, um, I know if I tried to get one and another one turned up in the garage like when this one turned up then what misses is like oh, we haven't got another one oh, no, no dear, cost of living crisis, definitely not it's Royal Enfield Australia own this one but I want to have one in the garage I really do, I, I genuinely say that I just feel like I could ride this all day. I'd, the only thing I'd probably do is add some hand guards just in case I drop it. And I'm going to start doing the pickup test. So the bikes that I get in for testing, I'm going to lay them over and see how hard they are to pick up because a lot of guys just go on specs. And I can tell you there's some bikes out there that probably similar weight but they're harder to pick up because ergonomically they're different they're really hard to pick up but I'm not going to compare this bike to any other one so let's do the pickup test here we go my world famous soon to be world famous adventure bike pickup test I just think it's a good idea if you are test riding an adventure bike you know you're obviously not going to come off in a nice smooth road like this but you know if you push it you know stuff happens so I'm going to lay bikes over I'm going to pick them up and we'll just see how easy it is because spec sheets tell you so much <sighs> hope my hair looks good spec, spec sheets only tell you so much you got to get out and test it you got to test a bike to know how it feels. That's my tip for adventure riders. If you're new to it. I've been adventure riding for years and I've, I've owned one of these 100%. Sorry Royal Enfield, Australia. Hope you don't get angry with me. I'm gonna lay it over. All right, that's on the ground. 
just make sure you can see that. Just make sure you can see it. Oh, easy. Easy. I probably didn't even bend my knees. I should have. Because I'm so bloody tall though. It's easy just to pick things up. That that's unbelievably easy. Have a go at that. See? You don't want a bike that's all the weight up the top. It's hard to pick up. But even if you had panniers on that, it probably wouldn't go over as far. You can just back it up. Probably have all the physio people going, oh, look at his back. He did bend his knees and I didn't. I probably should have. So I'm going to do it again, bending my knees. trouble for doing this. Levers are fine, everything's fine. Alright, I'll bend my knees. There you go. It's easy. Easy, easy. You can pick that bike up. No dramas. Anyway, we'll keep moving. And we'll get some more footage riding the Royal Enfield Himalayan 450. Thumbs up from me so far. Love it. Oh, I've got to be careful, I'm on the stock tyres. I like to have a set of off-road tyres on this. It's so fun. And it's so easy to ride. So easy to ride. I keep going on about it. The balance of it just it just feels it feels great. I love it. Absolutely love it. So I come in at about 105 kilos, plus my riding gear, add another 5 or 6, 111 kilos. I don't need to do anything to this bike. Probably over time, once you've embedded the suspension in, you might want to tweak it. But this bike's not... This is, the suspension suits the bike. You don't need to make a race bike out of it. I'm sure they'll guys they'll get it tweaked just to whatever they want you know they just fine-tune like we do with all of our bikes just fine-tune them as time goes on you've ridden it for a while then you go oh you know what I might but if I owned one of these I wouldn't touch it I'd just leave as is specs Specs and more specs. We can talk about them all day, but this is... If you're gonna... Ride a bike, if you're gonna get an adventure bike, go and ride one. I'm a novice, admittedly. A novice with connections though in the, motor, in the motorcycling game. I found an Adventure Rider magazine back in the day. No longer own it or a part of it. That's why I know everyone. It's very comfortable on the road. In six gear, doing 80, 4,000 revs. This feels like it's purring along. I like to record up through here every time I get a I go out for a ride anyway. 
come climbing up a hill some sharp turns and it does get a bit bumpy this is like my test some sharp corners no problem at all Jeez. you stand up and you get into it, it, it I'm surprised I'm really surprised you can have a lot of fun on this bike when you look at it you wouldn't think it would feel so aggressive but like it's it, if you want to rip in it lets you Keep in mind I'm a novice though, like not a racer or anything like that, but geez, I've done a lot of riding. But I've ridden a lot of bikes. Wow. Another sharp corner. Just tracks. That's impressive. Keep in mind I'm on road tyres as well. It, it feels so stable. The back's had a bit of a flick out occasionally. But yeah, wow. Wow. Love it. I get it. I get what the Royal Enfield's all about. It's such an easy bike to ride. It's well balanced. It's got plenty of power. I absolutely love it. I didn't ride the previous model and I don't want to compare this bike to any other model of bike. It's unique. It's well balanced. It feels very stable. Got a subframe set up for luggage. From when you look at the bike, it looks like it's got a quite a long wheelbase. Maybe that's where the stability comes from. It's really comfortable on the road. But I'm not a road rider, but I feel very confident and comfortable coming around corners on the Himalayan. The engineers have done a really good job. How they get it right. For a six foot one guy can stand up comfortably, standard, but then somebody who's, you know, five foot five can do it as well. Uh, the, the seat height is adjustable. I love that about it. Love it. You don't have to go and buy an extra, spend $600 buying a taller seat. Anyway, we'll keep moving. Bit of a wrap up on the Royal Enfield Himalayan 450 2024 model. It's very comfortable. The ergonomics are better than what I expected. It's got a lot of power when you need it. It's got a really strong subframe. It's 
so you can put luggage on the back. I like the simplicity of all the electronics. It might be flashing a bit because I've changed my um, hertz. I am using the ABS off-road. It is, it is working better with these tyres. Whether, I don't know, maybe there's some Royal Enfield guys that ride these, the Himalayans 450s. That could shed some light on that if you're watching this. But it, it works, so I, I don't know why I'd change it. The aggressive power when you need it for a single cylinder, it's there. I, I really, really like this bike and would I buy one? Absolutely. For the price, but also for the ride, the rideability of it. I'll call it that, the rideability. It's so rideable. It's the best way I could describe this bike. I feel like even reaching for the foot peg now, sometimes if I'm on another bike, I've got to lift my foot up and move it across and, and, and concentrate on the putting the brake on. On the foot peg, on my um, back brake. I, I can just sort of reach over and touch it. It's just ergonomically, you know, stand up, sit down, it's comfortable. Easy to ride. Trouble free. It's got a centre stand. It's got the side stand. You can pick it up. The seat height is adjustable for pretty much any rider well for me anyway six foot one I just raised the seat height on it it's all adjustable you don't have to buy extra bits and pieces I love this screen because I'm like I've the wind pushes straight over my head I'm not getting um, the wind buffering I'm not getting it at all the engineers of this bike have really done their job very well they've obviously listened to the market they've made it at a price I don't know how where it's affordable to get into adventure riding and I would definitely definitely own one of these